Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, I wanted to take a couple of minutes and share with you the Amazon Poly service and how to call this service from PowerShell. You can call Amazon Poly, which is a text-to-speech engine in the cloud, using any of the supported AWS SDKs. So in this case, we're going to switch over to Visual Studio Code running on my Windows 10 system, although you should also be able to use PowerShell Core Edition, which is a cross-platform version of PowerShell, and the AWS PowerShell SDK also supports the PowerShell core version, so you can follow along running PowerShell on Linux or Mac as well using PowerShell core. So the first thing we're going to do with most PowerShell scripts in AWS is to call the set default AWS region command. So this is going to set the default region or global region for our current working session. So we'll set the region parameter to US East 2, which is the Ohio region, and the Ohio region is one of the supported regions for the Amazon Poly service. Now the service may only be supported in certain regions, so make sure that you refer to the product documentation to ensure that you select one of the supported regions. The next thing I'm gonna do to kind of discover what I can do with the Poly service is to call the get AWS commandlet name command, which is exported by the AWS tools for PowerShell. The service parameter allows us to do a partial search for the service name that we want to query for commands for. So as you can see, we get back a list of different PowerShell commands here and the corresponding API in AWS itself. So if you are reading the documentation for, for example, the Describe Voices API, which lists out all of the available poly voices, that maps to the get poll voice command in the AWS PowerShell module. The other API we'll take a look at is called Synthesize Speech, which maps to the get poll speech command in the AWS PowerShell module. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the get poll voice command. So Amazon Poly provides a variety of different voices that you can use from a variety of different names, language codes, and also male or female. So let's take this list output here and format it into a tab tabular format that's a little bit easier to read. So I'm gonna pipe the get poll voice into format table dash auto size, which is a built-in PowerShell command that just helps make the formatting look a little bit nicer. So now we get this nice tabular view of all of the available voices. So we've got Indian voices, Japanese voices, Turkish, and lots of others. Now, if you want to sort this table by a particular property, you can also do that using the sort object command in PowerShell. So we'll run sort object dash property, and then let's say gender in this case, and then pipe that into format table again. So if we hit F8 on that line, you'll see that we now have our results formatted by, or sorted rather, by gender. If you want to sort by name, just change the dash property to name and hit F8. And you'll see that we now have a sorted list by name. And you can do the same thing for any other property, like language name as well. If you want to run some statistics against the poly voices, you can also pipe the results into the group object command. So PowerShell's group object command will allow you to group all of the results, all of these objects, based on one of their properties. So let's see how many voices there are across the two different genders. So it looks like we have 32 female voices and 20 male voices. And if we go ahead and group them by language name or perhaps language code, let's see what kind of results we get there. So it looks like we have eight English United States based voices. Uh, we have four Polish voices and just a couple of voices for the other languages like Italian, French, and so on and so forth. So you can use group object to categorize your objects and just run some quick statistics against them. And then the other thing you can do is use the where object command in PowerShell to filter the results based on a specific property. So if you're interested in just a female voice or just a male voice, you can use where object and then say psitem.gender equals female. So if we hit F8 to run that line, you'll see that we've filtered the list for female voices, and then we can just take those objects and pipe them into format table auto size as we did before. And now we have a filtered list of just the female voices. And of course, we can just remove the FE at the beginning 
and get a list of just the male voices. And you can use a similar technique using the where object command in PowerShell to filter any object on any property. So you could filter based on the language name or the individual's name and perhaps do a regular expression match there. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit and actually look at the get poll speech command. So get poll speech is how we actually invoke the poly service to return an audio file that contains the text to speech that we request. So the get poll speech command has a couple of key properties that we'll want to look at. First, we have the voice ID. Now, the voice ID is going to be one of the names, the voice names that we just took a look at. So let's choose, for example, a female name like Emma. So Emma is a British English voice, and we'll just go ahead and specify Emma here. Now you can see that I do get auto completion here. So if I just hit control space to invoke IntelliSense inside of Visual Studio Code, you can see I get this IntelliSense. And as I start typing one of the names, I can just hit tab to complete it. Next, we need to specify the actual text that we want to speak. So in this case, I'm just going to say, hello, Trevor Sullivan. And then finally, we need to also specify the output format. So there's a few different output formats available. There's MP3, AUG, Vorbis, and PCM. So for compatibility purposes, I'm just going to choose the AUG Vorbis format for now. So now we need to assign the result or the response from this API to a variable. So I'm just going to create a variable called speech. And if we hit F8 to run this line of code, you'll see that we get back our speech object or the response here. So let's go ahead and inspect this object. You can see the content type is audio slash AUG. And if we pipe the object into format list star, or you can do just for short FL star if you are typing quickly. And you'll see that we have this property called audio stream on the response object. So the audio stream is actually just an in-memory stream that we need to actually write to the file system so that we can then play back that audio file in one of our programs. So how do we do this? Well, the .NET framework has something called the file stream class. And so file stream, if we just instantiate that, if you take a look at the constructors for this, we can specify the path as well as the file mode. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll do poly.og as the file path. And then for the file mode, we can just pull up that .NET class. So it's system.io.file mode. And then you can do open or create. So that'll create the file if it doesn't exist. And it will also overwrite it if it already exists. So that'll allow us to kind of change some of the parameters here, perhaps change the text or change the voice, change the output format. And we can just uh, go ahead and rerun the script. And it'll just continually overwrite that one file. OK, so we need to actually capture the file stream that we're instantiating into a variable. And then what we're going to do is once we've created that file stream, we're going to copy the bytes from the audio stream using the copy to method. And then the destination for the copy to method is a stream, which includes our file stream here. So we'll pass that into our file stream. And then we will call the close method on the file stream. And that's going to basically render our file out to the file system. So let's go ahead and just select this code here and we'll hit F8. So that's going to regenerate the speech. It's going to create a file stream. It's going to copy the bytes to the file stream. And finally, it's going to close it. So as you can see in my local folder here, C slash Amazon slash poly, I have this poly.og file now. So if I go ahead and switch over to Windows File Explorer and double click that Hello, file, Trevor you'll notice Sullivan. that I actually get some speech. Hello, Trevor Sullivan. So now what else can we do with this? Well, one of the, the parameters that we haven't covered yet is how to specify the text type of SSML. So what is SSML? Well, SSML is a markup language that allows us to manipulate the speech that we generate with the poly service. So even though we specified just some plain text here at first, we can actually mark this up using an XML syntax that allows us to manipulate the voice inflection of the service and things like that. So if we switch over to the documentation here for Poly and drill down into the SSML tags, we can actually take a look at some of the different tags that are available for SSML. 
So I'm going to use the prosody tag, and the prosody tag allows you to specify the rate of speech or the volume of speech, and you can even change the speech's pitch. So what I'm going to do is use the prosody tag to speed up the voice to be extra fast. So let's go ahead and come in here and specify the prosody tag, and then we're going to set the rate attribute to x dash fast. And then because it's XML, we also need to provide a closing tag at the end of where we want it to close. So finally, we need to make sure that we have text type set to SSML. And then we'll go ahead and just rerun this code here. So we'll select this code and hit F8. And it has now regenerated our AUG file over here. So let's Hello, go ahead and open Trevor it. Sullivan. Hello, Trevor Sullivan. So as you can see, the voice is speaking a little bit faster now. So there's actually some other tags that you can take advantage of. So on the same prosody tag, you can also specify the pitch if you want. Uh, you can also do interesting things like say as, where you can actually specify a date, for example. And it'll actually speak the date as, you know, like the year and the month and the day. Uh, whereas all you have to worry about as a developer is passing in the actual date value. So there's a lot of different options here. I'll leave it to you guys to kind of look through this, but I just wanted to provide a brief introduction to the Poly service and how you can use Poly from the AWS PowerShell SDK. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and let me know in the comments what you're interested in seeing in the future. Thanks and goodbye.